Shares of Altria getting smoked today. The Wall Street Journal reporting the FDA is preparing an outright ban of Juul e-cigarettes. Altria has a 35 percent stake in Juul. Joining us now for more is Vivian Azer, senior research analyst at Cowan & Company. She covers Altria with a market perform rating and a $56 price target. Uh, Vivian, it's great to have you here to please just kind of place all this in context. Obviously, the, the market uh, had a pretty harsh reaction, down 9 percent, even though it's not really impacting the majority of Altria's business. So how would you sort it out for us? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So just by way of background, Altria invested $12.8 billion in December of 2018 to take a 35% stake in Juul. At the time, Juul was proving to be incredibly disruptive to the U.S. cigarette market, which um, comprises 85% of Altria's profits. While they did have their own e-cigarettes in the marketplace, they were not able to effectively compete against Juul, hence the investment. Fast forward to 2019, the youth vaping epidemic became incredibly problematic. Juul did try to be proactive. They pulled their characterizing flavors out of the marketplace before the FDA ultimately banned them. That's stuff like mango and cool cucumber. But then as of September of 2020, all of the e-cigarette manufacturers that were selling products in the U.S. marketplace at that point had to submit very comprehensive PMTA applications to the FDA. So the FDA has spent the better part of two years reviewing millions of applications in e-cigarettes. They've gone through about 99% of them, and they left the largest players to the end. We have heard from a couple of Juul, uh, heard from the FDA on a couple of Juul's key competitors. BAT has received some approvals. Japan Tobacco with their Logic brand has seen some approvals. Enjoy has seen some approvals. And Imperial Brands actually got a marketing denial order. And that's what the Wall Street Journal article is talking about today, that Juul would receive a marketing denial order for their applications with the FDA to remain in the marketplace. Now, from an investor's perspective, uh, with the stock where it is right now, you know, trading cheaply as it typically does, eight and a half times forward earnings or something like that, almost a 9% dividend yield, does it make sense to have this reaction uh, to, to, to this news? I mean, assuming that this is not going to be uh, a particularly viable business even going forward. So Altria isn't recognizing any equity income from Juul. So if you think about the mm -hmm. risk to consensus estimates, there really shouldn't be any. We weren't factoring anything from Juul in our 2022 or 2023 estimates. But the fundamental picture is, is a little bit more challenging. So Altria had access to a couple of different pieces of reduced risk technology. One was Juul via the 35% stake. Um, the other was access to Philip Morris International's ICOS heat not burn product. PMI has subsequently announced that they intend to acquire Swedish Match, um, and the market believes that Altria would lose access to that heat not burn technology. And so the reason we think that the stock has responded um, so negatively to this news is not the immediate financial implications, but really the position that it puts Altria in, in terms of diversifying away from their reliance on combustible cigarettes in the face of mounting regulatory policy priorities that the FDA has laid out, including the announcement last night to move forward on very low nicotine cigarettes. Yes, uh, obviously that's another entire piece of it. I guess, though, uh, bottom line, where the stock has come to now, it seems to leave a fair bit of upside to your $56 target. So uh, do you think the risk-reward is okay on, on Altria, or do you prefer another tobacco name? Uh, we prefer Philip Morris International. That is um, mm -hmm. our top pick in tobacco, and it's actually the only global cigarette manufacturer that we're recommending. Their reduced risk products, ICOS, are available in 66 countries around the world and account for 30% of their revenues. The company aspires to generate 50% of sales from reduced risk products, which puts them in much better stead from an ESG perspective than any other tobacco company that we cover.